Hey there everyone, we are back today with another comic review and today we're looking at a classic, in my opinion a classic, one of my favorite artists, one of my favorite people in comics, Rikovic, the one. This is a series from 1984, came out on a, in Eclipse Comics I believe, for, I'll put it out. And it's like a six issue miniseries. Um, this is a very different kind of book, especially for 1984, where uh, this is before Watchmen, before The Dark Knight. This is the kind of superhero deconstruction type of thing that uh, got very popular in the 80s. But uh, this is, you know, before the major ones. So we'll look at these. Um, we'll look at this a bit, but. Uh, the covers are uh, very Rick, Rick of Egypt. This is a very, like, you know, it looks like a box of Tide. Um, but if we if we flip through, the covers are all uh, very much like this kind of thing. They're kind of parodies of different things. So there's the one on the uh, on a dollar bill. Um, and there's other ones that are, you know, like, the one, the can of Coke. Um, and then the one uh, on an Uncle Sam poster. And there, I skipped one, but <laughs> there is also a, where is it? There it is. I skipped one, it's a calculator, but uh, this is the other one. It's like a McDonald's burger. It's, it's, you can tell by the uh, foam <laughs> the foam case for the burger. It's a very 1980s McDonald's kind of thing. Um, if the, the, you old, old folks will remember the uh, foam, the foam uh, package for for uh, burgers. Anyway, Rick Veitch here is, uh, you know, this is this is basically a superhero deconstruction. So, um, you're starting out this story with this guy. Who's like a supervillain, so he's like a industry, uh, like an industrialist who uh, sells weapon systems to the U.S. and Russia. And basically, he sets them up to, uh, you know, he set up sets it up so he can control both of them, and then he sets them off to fighting each other. And then, like, you know, he's telling the leaders of both countries, like, "Hey, you guys are fighting. You got to do something about this." And he's like, "They're like, well, you know, we're gonna have to go to war now because, like, we can't back down from this." It's something you did. And he's like, nah, whatever, you'll figure something out. Either way, I'm gonna become like the world's richest man after this, so thanks a lot. And then like, you know, they decide like, okay, we gotta nuke each other. So they nuke each other, but what happens is they send out the nukes and this kind of thing happens. This, uh, the one shows up basically and neutralizes all the, all the nukes. Um, so all the nukes get neutralized and then people start going into like weird trances. Some people turn like here's like you can see a bunch of people are passed out in the street. But uh, these people who are like, uh, you know, here's the one. But uh, he's stopping the bombs. But, you know, all the people pass out. And some people pass out and some people don't. And what happens is the people who pass out are kind of taken by this thing called, you know, this... It's like a philosophy almost, but it's like a kind of oneness with this being called the One. And there is another opposite being that the people didn't pass out during the what they call the Big Sleep. Um, they, uh, you know, the people who didn't pass out are pledged to somebody else called the Other. It's very much like, uh, it reminds me of The Stand by Stephen King a little bit, which was actually kind of... You know, it's been out for a while at this point, but like it's kind of like setting people up into two camps. But like, it's it's that alone is is the kind of only parallel in that like here, like the governments, you know, the nukes have failed, so the governments are like, oh, we can't use nukes, we have to figure something out else out. So like they make this thing where they create superhumans, and they the Americans have been creating superhumans for a long time, and they've just like finally perfected it. So here is like your. American super superheroes they're kind of like uh they're a lot like they're super you know they're invulnerable n near invulnerable and they uh have super speed and super hearing they're a bit like superman but they can't fly 
And the Russian, basically they do a test and the Russians figure it out and they make their own superhero really quickly, like a slapdash thing out of some like former Nazi project. So you'll, let me see if I can find that. Because like they, it's, oh, here it is. So like here, this woman is like, oh, you know, oh yeah, I've got this stuff. And like they made this gigantic super rat from this Nazi formula. And basically here they make it and he, he's, she's like, I can probably use this on humans. And they make a superhuman basically. Comrade Bog, who is just like Bog, apparently means God. Um, but they make this superhuman who is, um, you know, he's a superhuman, but he's flawed in a way that, like, if he eats too much, like, he'll start growing and get it, and like his hunger will become out of control, and he'll just be like, come a, kind of like an all consuming eating machine. And like, what happens is uh, he, you know, gets out of control. And they shoot, they shoot him off to America to fight. And the superheroes, who are hardly heroic, they're like a brother and sister team who are kind of incestuous. Oh, there's that other cover, the uh, calculator. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they have this weird team where, like, the, you know, the two superheroes, the American ones, are only attracted to each other because they're, like, the only people like e each other. But, like... You know, it turns out that they're not actually brother and sister, but throughout the whole book, they're like kind of this fighting their urges to uh, bang each other, basically, because they're, uh, you know, they're like the only superhumans uh, that they can have sex with and like their brother and sister. They think they are, at least. They've been programmed that way, but they're actually not. And, you know, there there is a kind of an interesting thing, but I want this the story. I won't like go completely into it, but uh, there is a lot of stuff going on with this. But like, I just want to like point out the... Uh, way this looks so like the the art style is very much like a rick veach so like if you remember when i talked about uh brad pack it looks brad pack brad pack is all done in black and white but this is a color comic but like the image the way the drawings are done are very much very similar so it's like if you look at this drawing it's um quite different from the kind of comic style at the time so like your main like this this is not a comic style that would fit very well for like Marvel or DC at the time. It's not the kind of style that they were into. And Rick Veach worked on stuff like Swamp Thing and um, other types of comics for DC and Marvel, but like he didn't draw in the same way. It was like, this is kind of his preferred style. It's a, it's, it's a really interesting style. So, uh, you know, overall this book it's it's really interesting. It's really uh, kind of like of its time in the, in the sense that like a lot of the references are very much like 1980s Cold War Cold War paranoia, which was a real thing. Like I mean I think a lot of you people who are younger don't understand the way that the Cold War was in the 80s because it was really ramped up under Reagan. Like um, <laughs> uh, there's a funny story actually like. When we were in elementary school, a friend of mine had this story that, like, his teacher once told the class that, like, you know, like, you get morning announcements, so there's, like, a speaker box in the room so everybody can hear the morning announcements. And, like, um, in the morning announcements, you know, after the morning announcements were over, she told the class one day that, like, if this, if this were Russia, that wouldn't be a speaker, it would be a camera, and they'd all be watching you all the time. So, like... It was that, and that's like a teacher at a school. So like you'd imagine, you, if you could imagine like that kind of level of paranoia and like, just like kind of uh, fear about Russia and America going to war in the 80s, it was, it was real. There was like a real threat of uh, nuclear devastation. So like, you know, after the 70s, there was kind of, in the 70s, like there was a kind of a, you know, uh, a lulling of that. It wasn't as a, uh, like a huge worry, but it really ramped up in the 80s before, like, eventually Russia fell. But, man, so this, and this like, <laughs> it's it's a very, like, so that's what I mean by it's of its time, because, like, it's really buying into those kinds of fears. But um, it's a really good story where the, you know, superhumans fight, and eventually, <laughs> you know, the superhumans, like, they have this battle, but, like, because they're ridiculous superhumans, like, they're basically killing everybody. Like, the, the, here is, like, the town. Like, they basically destroyed the city by with their battle. Um, this is the kind of thing that they explored in other comics, like, um, 
that deconstructs superheroes a lot like Mr. Miracle was a, was one Alan Moore's Mr. Miracle where like, you know, Mr. Miracle has his fight, um, that big superhuman battle and they like mash, they kill like a bunch of people and they mash up the city and like, and after that everyone is kind of like, okay, sir, we'll do whatever you want, sir. So like in this case, like these superhumans are so big and so strong and so powerful that they basically destroy everything. Um, the people who are pledged to the other, not the one, make these bizarre, like, human slugs pyramids. Like, they uh, basically form gigantic units that they all work together as. And the people who are join the one kind of become this one energy and fly off to a paradise. So it's an, it's an interesting kind of thing going on here. I really liked this story. Um, if you, if you're not a, if you, if you don't know about Rick Veach, you really should. Um, Brad Pack and the one, especially I would recommend, but like also, you know, he, uh, he did a lot, had a big run on Swamp Thing that only ended because he wanted Swamp Thing to be, to meet Jesus in a story, travel, time travel storyline using the green or whatever he was doing. He was traveling, Swamp Thing was traveling through time to a bunch of places, and for some reason he shows, he said was supposed to meet Jesus, and the rumor is that he was, Swamp Thing himself was supposed to be the uh, cross that Jesus was crucified on in the story. I kind of understand why DC in the 80s wouldn't print that, but I really wanted to read that. So this, that storyline, actually, Rick Feach quit DC over that thing, because they wouldn't let, it, they, like, approved it and then, like, didn't let him publish it, so... Anyway, Rick Veach is a legend. Great. He's got this. He's got stuff you can... He's self-publishing, reprinting some of this stuff on Amazon. So, like, this came out from IDW, and as did the... I think um, IDW also published the uh, um, hardcover for Brad Pack. But there's also, like, the Max Immortal, which is another Rick Veach uh, thing that's kind of connected to Brad Pack. The Max Immortal is, like, the actual super... Superman equivalent that's shows up at the end of Brad Pack. But then there's like Kid Max Mortal and there's a bunch of other stuff by him. So definitely look into Rick Veach. Definitely look into more of this. And yeah, just read more Rick Veach. <laughs> read all the all the Rick Veach you can. Um it's like the only he's like the only person I've ever considered like spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get a, uh, a commission from. So yeah, that's about it. I will talk to you guys next time.